Thank you, uh, Lenny. Where's, where's Uncle Dave? How are we doing on time? We, we've got seven minutes. Right. Why don't both you ladies come up, okay? And we've got uh, five minutes. Do I have a question? Any questions or comments on either of these? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Karen, please, please come up, and Lenny, please. Many for cattle, um, well, they're building the fences mainly for cattle disease control. And the overarching thing, in fact, is for international export and specifically export to the European Union. Um, foot and mouth disease is a very feared disease in um, Europe, well, everywhere, but uh, it's, it's endemic in, that, in the Okavango region and um, wild animals, in particular, carry it. So it's really trying to separate wild animals from cattle. So in a, in a sense, it is the conflict between what wilderness, wild nature, and cattle ranching. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. So, so the question was whether there's any other, um, whether there's printers in the region that depend on on Saiga. Um, so yes, there are. Um, with regards to adult saiga, the only predator that we've got left are wolves. There used to be Asi Asiatic cheetah. Um, there's a couple left in, in Iran, about 50, but in the saiga range states, they've gone extinct. Um, this cheetah may be one of the reasons why they're so fast. They actually run up to 80 kilometers an hour, so they're really, really speedy, um, and the wolves aren't actually that fast. Um, otherwise, with regards to the, the calves, I have these massive calving aggregations. So in May, tens of thousands of heavily pregnant females come together, and so this is a big feast for the predators. So vultures, eagles, a lot of birds of prey depend on them, and actually finding these calving aggregations, you look at the sky, and you, you see sort of a black cloud of, of birds of prey. Um, you've got Corsac fo foxes, um, red foxes. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yes, sir. Yeah, so the question was kind of other causes of, of, of cyber decline. Um, apart from poaching, um, and the question was whether it's uh, whether habitat change has affected the decline. Um, actually, what we've seen is in the step, because saiga numbers decline and livestock numbers also decline, actually similar to the, to the graph, sorry about the graph, um, that I showed you earlier. Um, the step is when you look at satellite images, is has really recovered from overgrazing. That used to be an issue and the Soviet days, so actually um, habitat change is not so much an issue. It's sort of uh, infrastructure, sort of other issues when pipelines are being built, that kind of stuff. Um, it's, it's climatic factors, severe winters, um, when there's heavy snow cover and that, that freezes and then sort of you get an icy cover, that's a big problem for Saiga, but um, actually habitat changes have been, have been positive, <coughs> so that overgrazing is not an issue, that the conditions are sort of as, as good as they get actually at the moment. So that didn't, um, that I, I would personally think that's sort of pretty low on, on, on the agenda. Thanks. Thanks, Lenny. Ambassador? Uh, Timothy Tower, retired diplomat and a county covenant in the environmental world. Uh, over my left shoulder is a, a high, lot, high point of ground called Capitol Hill. And these people work for senators and Congress very important. But if truth be told, these are the people who write the talking points for three by five cars that the great man or woman holds out of his pocket, or the position papers, or draft legislation. These are the people that run that place over there. What do you want them to do when they go back to the office in seven minutes, did you say? Uh, there's an Iraq problem, there's DARPA, there's the economy, there's $4.18 gasoline. 
what do you want them to do before they solve the rest of the problem? <laughs> Got 20 seconds, then. 20 seconds, oh no, 20 seconds, that's a shame. I'd like to sort of, first of all, be aware of the cycle decline, sort of realize that there's great opportunity for action in Central Asia, and to integrate sort of economic, political, and conservation interests. Um, science is something that we really need to sort of inform policymakers' decisions. The Kazakh government is really keen to actually uh, set up new protected areas, but they're a bit like marine turtles. We don't know where we are. We need to sort of improve the tracking, understanding, you know, what their migratory range is since that decline. So those are the kind of things I'd like to take with you. Thank you. All right, Kari, you, you've got okay. your 20 minutes in the sun. Okay. Well, well, I, I, 20 seconds. 20 minutes. Okay. Well, I think, first of all, they should go and visit the region with Dave Barron. Go, they've got to go to the upper Banga. But other than that, um, on the hill itself, I, I think support any initiatives uh, that support this transboundary conservation area, these peace parks, um, ecotourism development, that's very critical. And really find out what some big um, institutions like the World Bank are doing. Um, this, this cattle expansion um, was originally a World Bank project, and um, this needs to be tracked somehow. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, very much. Dave's going to say goodbye. And now, no one asked the most obvious question, and if you want to learn it, stay afterwards and talk to Linny, because the question that nobody asks is, what's the deal with the big nose, hey? It's the most amazing thing, and she actually knows the answer. Thanks. I hear that, too. Thanks, folks. We are pretty strict about 115, so you can trust us when you come. Um, watch the inbox very soon, same time, same place. Appreciate you being here. Thank you.